What's up? This is Exaltron. Um, just a little Cuneo uh, demo, just a little review for you. Um, I did another um, live demo of this Cuneo uh, in another video, and I got some questions about this, so I thought I would just kind of um, show you again what I'm doing there, and um, and then go through uh, how to set up uh, the Cuneo, how to set up through the Cuneo editor, and how to map to Ableton Live. Um, the things I'm going to show you today, just three of the uh, many effects that I'm doing with this. Um, basically the gating effect that you saw, uh, the filtering, like a pressure sensitive uh, filter, and that horizontal slider which is doing a frequency shift. So those are the three things that I'm going to show you today and uh, hopefully at another time I might have um, time to uh, go through some of the um, more advanced effects. Um, but I figured I would just kind of uh, get you started today. So um, the first thing that we want to look at is the sensitivity in the actual Cuneo editor. So this is preset one. Ableton main is what I call this. And um, I've got the global sensitivity cranked up all the way. That's the first thing. It's kind of a weird knob. Um, crank that all the way up. Anytime you make any changes, it wants you to save that preset and then update to the hardware. I'm not going to do that right now. but um, And then you want to take a look at the um, advanced um, sensitivity settings. So I'm going to go into the menu up here and I'm going to say show advanced. Um, and so what I've done is I've cranked up uh, the sensitivity on a lot of these pads. These are all independent. Um, so for some of these, I have zero. That's the default um, for your pad sensitivity. Let me zoom in on this. Um, and then for other ones, uh, I might have put something like four. These are the ones that are really important because that's doing all the gating. Everything is revolving around that that audio gating. Um, so I've set that to four. On threshold is four. Off threshold is two. Obviously, the off threshold has to be lower than the on threshold, otherwise it's not going to shut off. Um, and then the other important thing here is the velocity table, um, and that applies to all pads. I've got it set to light, um, and I played around with a lot of these. The, it, it's, it's pretty advanced when you look at the manual um, and the documentation. It's pretty advanced what uh, the way that these curves work, um, and they sort of give a description of each of the curves and how they work. But basically, what I would recommend is just play around, and if you feel like you're really having to pound on those pads, um, definitely crank up your sensitivity and, uh, and use that light uh, curve, that velocity table curve. Okay, so um, the next thing is you, you're going to need to um, basically tell the CUNIA what notes and what um, pressure things to send. So like for the, um, for the gating effect, for the audio gating, um, I'm just sending notes. And these, both these pads do the exact same thing. That just gives me um, kind of more room to move around with my fingers so that I'm not having to, uh, to hit the same pad all the time with my fingers. Um, I find that helps a lot. So I'm sending um, C sharp 2, and if you look at this um, note, field over here, C sharp 2 is 49. That's the same thing. It's just that they don't, they, they put a number in here instead of um, the C sharp 2 and they show you the C sharp 2 on the pad. I'm not sure why that is, but that's how they set it up. Um, for these two, I'm just sending that note. I'm not sending any pressure or XY information. 
And then um, for the filter, I'm sending uh, CC27. I'm not sending any X or Y. Um, you can obviously you can add X and Y, and you can basically load up each of these pads with um, data that it's sending. But it does get kind of uh, complicated. It gets hard to manage, and there's really only so much you can do if you're pressing. Um, on the edge of the pad, you're not going to get the full range of pressure. So if you're using the XY and you're going to each end of the pad, um, you're not going to be able to get that pressure and vice versa. So in a lot of cases, I just I might do pressure and X, or I might just do pressure, um, but I usually don't do all three. And then the third thing here is this horizontal slider. Um, basically, it's sending Pressure is 70 and location is 71. And I'll go into why I want to send both of those. It's basically a smart knob concept so that the pressure is um, turning on that effect. And then once it's turned on, the location is telling that effect what to do. So that's basically all you need to know um, in terms of the uh, Cuneo editor for the purpose of this demo. Um, so let's go into Ableton and um, take a look at how these are mapped. Now the the gating effect, um, I'll show you that one more time just so we know what we're talking about here. Um, you're, what you're seeing here, it's kind of funny because the, the actual visual doesn't really um, always keep up. This isn't a frame rate issue, this is just this is what I'm looking at too. It doesn't always show you um, what it's doing, but it does. You can see that it reacts really fast. Um, this is a Max for Live patch, uh, and this is just sort of what I figured out. Um, what I do is I send that note, and then I strip out the actual note value. I just use the velocity of the note, um, and the velocity is. Um, is then scaled to a, um, a decibel range, and that is what's opening up um, this gain, this gain stage here. So I know that's a little bit complex. What I've done in the past is I've used a utility, um, and what you could do is just uh, have that utility maybe send like pressure to that utility, and the pressure would open up that gate. There's a lot of different ways to attack it. Um, unfortunately. This I'm using uh, Live 8. There's there really isn't um, an easy way out of the box to get that gating effect. Um, at least that that I've figured out. There's a lot of workarounds. Um, you could you could always Google you know live gating effect something like that audio gating. Um, but this is what I've figured out. Um, that's not a MIDI mapping. That's actually receiving um, on a MIDI channel. It's receiving that note and then it's sending it over. So it doesn't that doesn't have to actually be mapped. Um, however, I'm also, um, on this dial, I'm also receiving 128, which is another, that's a pressure pad that allows me to get a soft attack. So that's a pressure pad right there. So I can actually get kind of more of a whooshing effect. So the next thing here is going to be the filtering, and the filtering is happening through this what what I've named the FCB filter. This used to be um, controlled by another controller. Um, and what's happening is as I'm hitting this, it's turning on, and then as I press down more and more, uh, it's going to it's going to basically open up um, that frequency. Frequency is going to go higher. But it's also taking the cue down. So what that does is um, it keeps it from it keeps that filter from getting too uh, piercing. So in the middle, let's hear how that sounds. Okay. 
So how do I do that um, in terms of MIDI mapping? If we go into the MIDI map, um, what I'm doing is I'm sending uh, that 27, that CC27 that I showed you earlier. Um, and let's go into the inspector and see what the ranges are here. Um, so the, the frequency um, is set to 123 to 2.77 kilohertz. Um, so that's not the whole range. Obviously, I don't want to go down because I'm not, um, I'm not really using that whole range. I'm not really using the bass. Um, and, and I want to basically have a continue, like that middle range, I want it um, to be coming out all the time. So I've set that, um, that range accordingly. And then the Q value is set from 1.45 to 0 0.44. So as I increase that frequency, I'm decreasing the Q. So I'm, I'm basically keeping that from getting too piercing. Oh, and also, I'm turning the thing on um, with that same CC just by setting the minimum very low and the maximum very high. Um, it's not going to be on until I press on it. And the littlest amount of pressure is going to turn it on. Okay, so that's the filter. And then the third thing here is the frequency shifter. And the way that that works is, again, as I'm touching um, this pad, it's going to turn on. Let's zoom in on that. So touch the pad, it turns on. And then as I slide, I'm going through the frequency. And again, it's a very short range. And I'm sending um, one value, the pressure value, to the on-off. So there's the pressure value, and then um, I'm sending the location value 71 to that frequency shift. And the reason for that short range, you can sort of hear it. So as I'm getting very low, it's, there's really nothing there to hear because you know what you're dealing with in terms of the audio information, um, it's just not that wide of a range. So, um, so that's why I've set that to sort of a, um, a pretty small range in terms of that frequency. So that's basically it. Um, sorry to jump around a lot in this lesson. Obviously, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of complicated. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And um, a lot of stuff that I'm that I'm not covering in this demo. But if you have questions and there's something specific um, that you want me to cover from some of the other videos, I can do that. Um, just let me know in the comments. All right. Thanks so much for watching.